minyak dan gas bumi adalah sektor unggulan di Indonesia, di Indonesia sehingga mempunyai daya tarik tersendiri. Dikarenakan sektor ini menyumbang devisa negara cukup besar, 109 serta sekarang bekerja di biodiesel PHMWC. Saya bekerja di Pertamina Hulu Energi Offshore Northwest Java. Kami akan melanjutkan bekerja di PT PT Bintara Lumina Indonesia. Saat ini saya bekerja di PT Bemba. Sekarang saya bekerja di PT Indra Sekarang, sekarang saya bekerja di Mayora Indah TBK. Sekarang kami bekerja di PT KW Indonesia. Jadi, ada tiga sebalongan itu mempunyai alumni plus masuk lagi akan dikirimkan ke sebalongan. Dan sekali lagi ketika kalian mau menjadi saya atau dengan yang lainnya, kuliahlah di akan tiga sebalongan di Indah Mati. Ngerti Induction. Dear Mrs. Puji Astuti Ibrahim, MSI. Time is yours. Safety Induction. Welcome to International Webinar. According to safety instruction at this time, I would like to convey the safety induction. We are currently at the online International Webinar. There are two possible hazards which will occur. There are fire and earthquake. If there is fire or earthquake, please keep yourself immediately with protect your head with both hand cover your head and sheltering under a study table or corner. Stay away from any glasses or hanging object. Do not move until all the shaking house has ended or an all clear signal is given. If there is fire, cover your news with tissue or cloth and get out from the room immediately. Turn off all the electricity and call fire department at where are you right now always wear your mask and keep your distance avoid crowded place and keep implementing the health protocol use the safety instruction i convey may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always protect all of us thank you <laughs> the next agenda are speeches the first Welcoming and opening remarks by Rector of Institute Technology Petroleum Balongan, dear Mrs. Dr. Insinyur Haja Hanifah Handayani, MT. Time is yours. Thank you, Miss Yuli. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to thank our speaker in this webinar. Professor T.S. Dr. Jumadi bin Abdul Sukkot, Dean Faculty of Engineering Technology, UTHM. Number two, Professor Dr. Abdul Mutalib Leman, Lecturer of UTHM. Uh, number three, Dr. Masjuri MKKK, Lecturer of Institute Technology, Petroleum Balongan. Uh, Diploma Engineering, Winadi Sadi P. PhD, Rector University, Sanggabuana. Second, I would like to thank all participants in this webinar who already spent uh, your time to, be, uh, to gain more knowledge. This webinar is collaboration between Institute Technology Petroleum Balongan and UTHM Malaysia. And the topic in this webinar is process safety in oil and gas industry. Currently, this topic is trend in the world because process, process safety is very important in oil and gas industry. We, we all know oil and gas industry have high risk. Hopefully, we gain more knowledge for all of us, and I hope this collaboration between Institute Technology Petroleum Balongan and UPTMA UTHM Malaysia will continue in the future. And now, in this webinar, I join to Dr. Salamah Di Azos from Al Furat Al Aufsat Technical University, Iraq, uh, Telecommunication Engineering. I hope we have a lot of uh, 
a lot of people we can join in this uh, webinar. And before I end it, I speak, uh, I will open this webinar by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Keep your spirit to join in this webinar until the finish. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi Thank you, Jahani Fahandayani, for our speech and insight. The second speech will be delivered by Dean Faculty of Engineering Technology of University Tun Hussein on Malaysia, Mr. Professor T. S. Dr. Jumadil Abdul Sukar. Time for Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Honorable Dr. Insinyur Director Institute Technology Petroleum Balongan, our respected speakers and writer, ladies and gentlemen, and to all beloved students, mission and Indonesia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Good morning, Alam Sejahtera. Apa kabar semua? Alhamdulillah, first of all, this professional webinar series uh, with the theme of process safety in oil and gas industry. Um, on behalf of UTHM and the faculty, I would like to say thank you very much to the organi organizer for inviting and involving us in this webinar, both for the lecture as a speaker and also the student as participants. We really appreciate it. I believe this might be the first collaboration and activity between ITPB and our faculty. I strongly believe that there are many more collaboration can be explored together, such as research collaboration, student mobility, staff exchange, and many more. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to briefly share some information about our faculty. Our faculty is called Faculty of Engineering Technology and one of the eight faculties available in UTHM. UTHM has about 19,000 students and about 2,000 of them are from our faculty. Among the 19,000 of the students in UTHM, about 1,000 are international students from various countries and about 200 students are from Indonesia. Our, fac our faculty has 23 international students and six of them are Indonesian. Our faculty also has six international staffs and three of them are Indonesian. In other words, Indonesians are most welcome to our faculty, be part of our family, and therefore, I'm sincerely inviting all potential staffs and students of ITPB to further your postgraduate studies in UTHM, particularly in our faculty. Actually, I personally have close relation with Indonesia. I'm a Javanese and my late grandparents came from Indonesia. So far, I had been to Indonesia four times, two times to Jakarta, once to Jogja, and once to Bandung, of course to Bandung uh, for shopping. It was a great time there and I really enjoyed the food, especially nasi padang. Lauknya banyak sekali, macam-macam ada. Jadi, gentlemen, our faculty is quite unique if compared to other faculties in UTHM. Our academic programs are in various fields. There are five main fields, engineering technology in civil, electrical, mechanical, chemical, and transportation. We have about 105 laboratories with high-end facilities. Uh, in UTHM, we are the faculty with the most numbers of laboratories. Furthermore, for the information, UTHM is rated as five-star rating university based on QS star rating system. As a summary about our, our faculty, please come and visit us, then you will know about our faculty. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that this web webinar will give students great exposure to the practical challenges in process safety in oil and gas industry. Such inputs would certainly help them in bridging the gap between theory and practice, making them more prepared for the industry upon graduation. To all students, especially our Malaysian students, please take this opportunity 
to gain knowledge as much as you can and ask many questions as possible. Hope you enjoy this webinar. Before I end my speech again, I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to ITPB for organizing this webinar and inviting us to be part of the event. With that, thank you very much. Wabilai Taufik Walidaya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Professor T.S. Dr. Jumadil bin Abdul Sukar for the speech and insight. Photography session. To our audience, I please you to turn on camera because we are going to take a picture together. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the main agenda today. This is delivery material by speaker and discussion, then followed by question section. A moderator of webinar today will be guided by Mr. Muhammad Anton, MPD of ITPB. Time is yours. All right. Thank you, Ms. Yuli Mulyani. Good, Good morning, morning, ladies, ladies and, and gentlemen. A very warm greeting to each and every one of you. Welcome to the presentation materials discussion and the question section. My name is Muhammad Anton, and I will be serving as your moderator today. Before we begin, I have a few provision for this occasion. The first. Each presenter today will have a total 30 minutes for their presentation. And the second, during the presenters deliver the materials, participants are not allowed to interrupt. And the last provision is, if you have any question related to the presentation material, please use the chat feature in the Zoom and the question would be open while the speaker deliver the materials. So those are the rules and regulation that we have. Now, moving along to our section, let's please welcome to our first speaker, Mr. Dr. Mas Julie M. Katiga. Mr. Dr. Mas Julie M. Katiga is developed constructor safety management system in PT ATS Tegal in 2020. He developed ISO 45005 in PT Politama Propindo Indramayu Indonesia in 2020. He also in charge for HRE superintendent in train and FLNG project Kota in 1987 and in 1988 and safety inspector in project refinery unit 6 Balongan in 1992 until 1995 and he managed world through for small project in marketing and trading in 2010 up to 2013. He also implement ISO 45 and 1 in PT Sinerco in 2020. And now he is a lecturer of fire and safety in Diploma 3 ITPB to teach and share his knowledge. So ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Mr. Dr. Mas Julie M. Katiga, who will speaking to us about the gap analysis of refinery and petrochemical in Indonesia. Time is yours. The honorable all participant, uh, I will presentation about the uh, PSM gap analysis in XAZ uh, company. This is my experience uh, conduct the uh, assessment with my team in year 2021. 
this company has activities as shown below, namely processing condensat into naphtha, mogas, menzen, paracillin, and heavy aromatic uh, products. To keep the company running smoothly without fire disturbance, fog incident, and environmental pollution, the company uh, implements uh, E3LL policy ISO 9001 for the quality, and then uh, ISO 40001 uh 2015 for environmental and then uh, iso 40001 2018 for uh, occupational and safety management system and then uh, process safety management to find out the quality of the implementation psm this company conducted a psm gap analysis by comparing PSM standard according to the checklist versus a uh, field application. Gap analysis method. Uh, we conduct the interview focus uh, from each department using the PSM checklist. Uh, if uh, no data, we'll give uh, zero and then we'll uh, and we'll give the one if uh, complete the, the data and the bill is okay. And then uh, we'll survey the generator turbine area, control room, and maintenance office. Because uh, I asked to the employee where uh, uh, already uh, occurred about the fire in this company. And then uh, the employee uh, bring to me, uh, give information there is a uh, fire in generator to the bank. This is a result of the gap analysis. There is a uh, 14 the element. Uh, employee improvement, there is a score uh, 5.355% and then uh, process safety information 1.2 and then process asset analysis 1.02, operating procedure 2.9 uh, and then uh, training for process of an operation uh, zero score and then contractor 4.76 percent free startup safety review zero percent and then mechanical integrity uh, 3.57 percent but work permit 4.74 Management of chain, this is good, uh, 7.14. Incident investigation, emergency response plan, compliance audit, and threat script, all zero. This is a very tight uh, assessment because uh, if not tight, will, uh, the auditor will uh, responsible if there is accident. Continue, uh, this is a description of each element, employee improvement. In the, this company already uh, conduct the unship act and unship condition. If one person have a uh, responsible to report to the company uh, about the uh, Unship condition and unship act after uh, his survey in the field. One person uh, responsible for uh, one report each month. And then if uh, one year, there is uh, 12. 
develop a report about the ANSIP X and ANSIP position. And then a uh, process safety information. There is no integrity database, the content, the data on physical and chemical properties of critically processes chemicals. Material safety data sheet training has not yet become a routine training program in human, human resources. The available database is only static equipment, but not yet online. The document process description is not available. There is no quantitative risk analysis document. Zone 1 and Zone 2 are implemented, but there is no hazardous area classification study based on APA 500 and APA RP 505. There is no document sizing calculation for pressure set develop that refers to APA 520. There is no database of code and standard like an APA, APA, ANSI, ASTM, not yet a database. There is no procedure regarding safety integrated level for the interlock system. Process hazard analysis. Hazard is done, but procedure to do hazard does not exist and facilitator has not proof of competence. The operating procedure, there is no emergency procedure document that control the condition when the software GCS crashes or hang because uh, audience, uh, if uh, look the video about the uh, Repertory in America, there is a fire because uh, one item, the problem about the DCS or control room. There is no LOPA or safety integrated level study. And then the training for process and operation, not yet complete, uh, still uh, 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 each item not, not completed. And then the contractors, contractor safety management is only implemented during pre-qualification, not yet the work instruction, procedure, and final evaluation have not been implemented. And then about the startup, uh, process safety uh, startup review for management of change activities, is not implemented. And then uh, mechanical integrity, the competence of the personnel responsible for the implementing, implementation of mechanical integrity is not well structured. And then hot work permit, there is no certification for uh, training participant. The appointment by the general manager as head of engineering for the official signing of that hot work permit does not exist. The trainer has not been approved by the general manager. This is uh, okay about the management of chain because he uh, have point uh, one, uh, 7%. And then uh, incident investigation, like uh, chemical release, example, uh, pressure safety pile popping, or chemical leakage are not investigated. There is no process safety based incident investigation uh, training. And then uh, simulation related to emergency process condition have never been carried out. Compliant audit. There are no personnel who have audit competence based on uh, process safety. Process safety audit procedure are not yet available. This is a uh, still problem in Indonesia because uh, me uh, follow the cost of system in Malaysia yeah, because uh, uh, there is a instructor from the America. And then the trade script, there is no procedure governing or competition agreement 
that stipulates that employees or vendor are not allowed to provide uh, any information to other parties outside of PTXIZ. And then, uh, we'll visit Lisa. We uh, continue to visit the field and then uh, ask the employee where uh, uh, have occurred in fire in this uh, company. And then, uh, employee uh, give information to me, uh, there is a fire in uh, turbine. And then, uh, we look to the turbine. Uh, many uh, cleaning cloth in the floor. And then uh, I go to the manager maintenance, ask why uh, many cleaning cloth on the floor. Uh, the manager information to me, there is a leak uh, in the magnetic clutch. Because uh, my experience uh, assessment in the uh, electrical uh, power Many uh, fire of the turbine because uh, there is leak in oil from the turbine. And then uh, in NAPA 850 experience again uh, because uh, very, very dangerous it leak uh, from the turbine. Recommendation uh, from this assessment. Uh, commitment and policy from management of PTXIZ to implement PSN. And then form a PSN team consistent of all related function in PTXIZ. For example, as follow, the person in charge running PSN, PTXIZ, like uh, general manager as advisor, and then chairman as uh, of the operation manager and deputy chair of uh, ITAC. Because in my experience in Pertamina uh, uh, to, to implement this in the process safety management, uh, each department have uh, responsible to follow the team uh, process safety management. And then the coordinator of each element whose member consists of each function. Example of process hazard analysis coordinator is engineering with a member like a production, maintenance, and reliability, it is a mechanical integrity coordinator is real with a member of maintenance, engineering, production, uh, it is the uh, procurement. Consolidation in PSM to create PSM implementation program and target. Following up, up on the result of the field PC, namely repairing minor leaks in the compressor, turbine, generator area, and not putting flammable waste material in the uh, CTG area. This is uh, my experience uh, implementation assessment in the PTXZ uh, company. Uh, I appreciate because the income, this company already uh, implementation the PSL and then conduct to the gap analysis. Thank you, the audience. I hope uh, you support this uh, recommendation, this uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Dr. Mas Juli MK3, for addressing this interesting topic. The next is, it is my pleasure to introduce our second speaker, Mr. Professor Dr. Abdul Muttalib Lehman. Mr. Professor Dr. Abdul Muttalib Lehman, he is a lecturer at University Technology Tun Hussein On. He has given opportunity to have industrial training in Japan for six months. Dr. Abdul Mutalib has been involved in 75 title research. He has written more than 150 articles in international journal, including the Asian Journal on Quality, Safety and Health, Finnish Institute on Occupational Health, or WIRE, 
International Journal on Research and Applied Science, and the Australian Welding Journal. He, all, he is also a researcher and often present the result of his works. His research include domestic 70 papers and international 100 paper works. He has presented research papers abroad, including Finland, Greece, Denmark, Italy, South Korea, China, Indonesia, and Thailand. So ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Mr. Professor Dr. Abdul Muttalib Lehman, who will be speaking the topic, Process Safety, Time is Yours. Yes, please, sir. Time is yours. Are you here, my voice? Yes, sir. We can hear your voice. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Again, salamu alaikum and very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to the uh, ITPB Balongan to invited me to in our joint seminar, this is our first uh, collaboration. I hope that it is not the last, eh, which is uh, we can uh, serve eh, both uh, in institution uh, regarding whatever the topic eh, regarding the oil and gas and the related uh, activities. Uh, today, allow me to speak on the uh, process safety, which is uh, if you are talking process safety is a very big actually uh, activities eh, has been mentioned by Dr. Mas Julie just now. So I think uh, I'm just uh, proceed in a certain part, uh, which is uh, whatever we can discuss. And I think uh, not uh, even settled here. Maybe next round, we will do the face-to-face -face also, uh, we, whereby maybe we sit in Indonesia first, and also after that, we come back to Malaysia for the second round. Uh, that's what we need to discuss further. Anyway. Uh, Okay, when we talk about uh, process safety, there's a lot of the, uh, what we call that, uh, there's a lot of the uh, process. Uh, we are talking about the knowledge, first of all, uh, and a co operational control. Other than that, uh, we are looking into the incident learning and response, uh, has been mentioned, ERP, for example. And also we look into the hazard identification and control, and after that, we look into the participant and uh, participation and management. Whatever we want to do is start with the management first. If you are looking into this, I think I believe that whatever the sharing information will be a benefit to the employer and also to the employees eh, to go on a good image on the process safety and how they are control their activities and especially on their product and also talking about their productivity and also and again uh, we are talking about the prevention and uh, the content title uh, whatever i need to discuss further today is talking about the introduction to the process safety and i would like to highlight a few accident statistics and also law and regulation whatever has been used in malaysia particularly and also i need to look into the strategy and planning, what, what we want to do, what we should do actually, and also the preparation. We are talking about training, we are talking about the implementation of the new standard, eh, the current standard, whatever, what the preparation, and also the last one I need to highlight on the future planning, what we should do in this uh, process or what else. All right, uh, 
The process safety. The process safety normally is focused on the preventing fires, like uh, explosion and chemical accident in chemical process uh, facility and other facility dealing with hazardous material such as refinery and whatever, oil and gas production, installation, and so on. But uh, at the same time, the process safety also look into the engineering and operation practice. That the reason why I put there, there's a guide, guidance on preparation and updating the report on industrial activity at the same time. This must go parallel, uh, in place, uh, proper way, and so on, to ensure that uh, what is our process we can control and we notice that what the hazard in the first place. It become, uh, normally, this is a, uh, this uh, def definition I come from Center of Chemical Process Safety, CCPS. Okay, I'm I'm just uh, to highlight a few cases in Malaysia. For example, uh, we are talking about safety alert oil refinery fire cases. Uh, in uh, 2016, they have a cases on fire occurred at the heat exchanger unit at the oil refinery about 9:30 p.m. at that particular day. It technical occurs and affected their heat exchanger close to the incident area and caused the building structure defect. And but there were no fatalities and injuries. Okay, that also the fire progressively diminished within twenty minutes later. So uh, the following prevent preventive measure: what we should do, we should conduct the maintenance schedule. We should look into the bolt and nut, and sometimes they can spark and what has it come from. Talking about implement the program to ensure safety work procedure. Uh, we are talking SOP and so on. They must put in place in handling the uh, flammable material uh, during the maintenance. And an employer should provide an adequate training. Again, the training is must in place and must be uh, future planning, who go first, whatever the unit are very important. Ensure the maintenance record, all the equipment properly maintained uh, and audit uh, from time to time. This is the first cases. And I move to the second cases whereby we have uh, explosion of the sterilizer. Okay. Then explosion occurred at the sterilizer causing the uh, inlet quick opening door in the sterilizer force open around uh, that time. A complete cycle of the F, uh, FB, we call it uh, a fresh uh, fruit bunch for the palm oil. Uh, okay, this is a uh, how we are processing. And also, in order to prevent the accident in the workplace, to follow the preventive measures should be taken. Sterilizer inspection and operation need to be emphasized, consists of diameter. And also, periodic maintenance record must be updated and audited. Not only the updated, it must be audited. And the third one, ensure during inspection, there is no defect to the quick opener door, uh, integrity of the weld joint and the lock ring and so on. Ensure that insulation completely intact in of the prevent to the sensor damage and design calculation need to be improved. All right. So this is a second case that I need to highlight. And also I have another one case, which is talking about dust exposure at Kanaf processing plant. All right, in October 16 also. So, uh, dust explosion has occurred in Kenaf processing plant. The Kenaf uh, steam uh, burn out the, uh, the product, final product as a charcoal. They're doing a charcoal eh? from this process. They need to do a charcoal. Uh, then the, the explosion has been affected to the processing area and caused serious injury to the worker and defect to the building. And based on the incident, we are looking into what are the pro for following for the preventive measures that we can do. First, employer should conduct the risk identification, right? Maybe after that, uh, in the uh, new slide, at the end, I will talking about the high rack. So before that, I'm just to highlight these issues. The second one, the, to ensure that the element contained in the dust exposure, Pentagon, such as combustible material, is a fuel. And the third one, installation, the additional equipment such as rupture disease and also confined space to re reduce the impact of the explosion. And number four, provide proper training and awareness. Again, the training also talking, uh, uh, whatever from the report is talking about <laughs> training and training. That's uh, what I think we should highlight eh, when we are talking about the policy safety. This is another one case. Ini tulis dalam bahasa Melayu ya Pak, <laughs> bisa ya. <laughs> Yang ini, case letupan lori tangki hidrogen peroksida. Eh? 
hydrogen peroxide. You see that that the lorry, that's the picture here. So you see the lorry, that's not lorry anymore. All right. So it is burned and it did explode. Huh? You're talking about this though. Uh, normally, when we are looking into this, we are also said that uh, we are talking about the Prontian knowledge, talking about safety and health, talking about process safety, but it happened. Why it is happened day by day? I'm just to uh, give some of the information, whatever the assimilation has gone through, which is the national occupational accident and fatality rate eh, for the Malaysia. So uh, you are talking about accident rate yearly starting since 2014 till 2021. Whatever we have, the data, it looks like a flood tweet here and there right and as if you look at 2014 3.1 and also if you are looking into the 2021 1.43 it's look like there's some of the uh, decrease and uh, reducing and talking about the rate and so on but at the same time the highest number in between is talking about 2017 means that uh, we need to control we need to ensure uh, whatever the uh, enforcement has been done to make sure they check all this industry and the first accident rate if we are talking uh, in, our, in Malaysia we are per 1000 workers means that uh, 1000 workers it will be effect 1.43 means that two person at every 100 1000 workers meanwhile we are looking into the fatality rate which is uh, since uh, 2014 we have 4.21 and 2021 we have two all right which is occup uh, occupational fatality rate per 100 thousand workers that we are looking into the whereby we are setting the statistic based on this uh, rate and also the 100,000 uh, workers means that 100,000 workers we have and also two of them are died fertility because of the occupational this one is only the reported case and also we are talking only for the department of occupational safety and health reported and investigated for the a person who are not uh, report and also the company who are not report we didn't uh, have the data actually and also we have another one uh, in uh, what we call that institution yeah, and and also the organization that control on this uh, talking about the pension talking about the uh, uh, paying back to the workers we have a uh, soxo -so, or uh, in a uh, we call a uh, social uh, organization eh? security organization whereby uh, the person who are report here also it can be report to soxo -so also for the compensation and so on so if you're looking into the industry we are divided in 10 sector in Malaysia, normally they are divided into 10 sectors. So if you are related to the utilities and gas, you can see there, uh, there has uh, numbers, uh, which is uh, related uh, to the oil, gas also, electricity, gas, water, and sanitary services. Uh, in 2022, uh, this year, uh, till the August, uh, till the August, updated till the August uh, 2022, they has had a fatality cases. So you see, uh, till now, up to date until to the October uh, August 2022, they have 5,366 cases of the occupational accident. And the main uh, uh, sector that related to this accident number is manufacturing and also is followed by agriculture and so on. So if you're looking into the debt, uh, uh, normally is all talking about the manufacturing uh, and also the first one is construction. The second one is the manufacturing. It also divided by three category, talking about NPD. NPD means that uh, non-permanent disability. And also we are talking about PD, permanent disability and also uh, that, eh? so fatal. Then the data normally it will be compared. Eh? Sometimes the compare the comparison is also uh, based on the year, and also we are look, talking about the workforce also for the current uh, timing uh, in Malaysia. We have a fourteen point 
five uh, million workers, eh, 14.5 million workers. I noticed that is a, some sort of small number if you're talking about it in Indonesia because your, your, your population is 245 million, right? So the workers, maybe if you put half of that also, you have 120 something million. So if you're talking about Malaysia, we are small country with this, uh, per, uh, which is the population about 33.8 uh, million only. And also the growing demand for the process safety management in Malaysia. They have a highlight by the uh, engineer uh, Abdul Aziz uh, Salim, which is uh, they're talking about process safety and also what the element of the process safety need to be highlighted. Eh? Uh, some of these uh, element has been highlighted by uh, previous speakers and also uh, I may uh, say only a few parts that I see uh, in the in the beginning of the uh, my speech. This is not first and last, right? We should have another question. All right. So if you're talking about the aspect of PSM concern, eh, that what are the incident summary? We are talking about fire started. We are talking about pipeline. We are talking about fire in reactor process unit. We are talking about a vessel containing chemical compound and so on. And furnace experience external fire due to positive draft and so on. So that is the uh, re report from Dodge in 2011, which is they highlight the PSM implementation status by uh, one of the sample of the organization so we are need uh, to make sure we get a lot of data to ensure that what we can analyze and what we are standing for now all right next uh, we are looking into the dust explosion i'm just highlight a bit previously we are talking about the knaf is very basic and also now we are talking about dust explosion why it is happened so dust explosion and a reset workplace more than 75 percent of dust process in industry are combustible dust and also in dust accumulation is not controlled it can be the dust explosion so you can look at there whereby the imperial sugar dust explosion exceeded in georgia us in 2008 so uh, this is not uh, you know uh, uh, talking uh, some of the people they say that it's basic or what else but now in a reality there has been you know a show us did how uh, big uh, these uh, dust uh, processing and explosion can be all right we are continue uh, what are standards say all about bsi and, and fpa and so on so if you are looking into the combustible dust, it's not only come from the one sources. It can be from the uh, multiple sources or every sector, whatever related. Uh, first sector, maybe we can say that agriculture products because we have uh, previously, I'm talking about the sugar uh, plant, eh, which is uh, in Georgia. And also we have a chemical dust, we have a metal dust, we have... Uh, carbonaceous dust, uh, agricultural dust, and again, uh, plastic dust, and so on. So the industrial related are prone to the dust exposure, not only one industry. is some sort of a related here and there. For example, pharmaceutical, uh, for example, the coal industry, uh, sugar refinery, uh, uh, chemical refinery, and so on. So please, uh, sometimes we think that one is only dust, but it cannot be a, a combust, uh, comb it's not a combustible product and so on. But you have to look it one by one to ensure that uh, in the process, whatever we use, for example, in chemical, what we use, we must have a safety data sheet. Look into that. Uh, what are the uh, fire cases? What are the ingredients? Uh, if you're talking about health, we want to know what, what are the hazard identification and effect to the health and so on. All right. Dust explosion theory, somehow we look into the very basic one because we have we are talking about the dust explosion cannot occur if one of the above sources does not present. This is just for the examples. And you are talking about the same, which is what I were talking about, the fire triangles. Uh, but uh, we are talking about the enclosed spaces. We are talking about the oxygen dispersion and so on. And also at the same time, 
whatever the process we look into the ignition sources that reason why the permit to work is very very important otherwise we want to go for the uh, hot work or cold work it must be registered and also whatever the equipment whatever the machine that you bring together to the plant need to be inspect one by one to make sure that there's no hazard uh, whatever the open sources uh, to give a defect to the company to the process to the building to the structure and uh, not but not least to the people inside there which is a workers uh, in the cases of fire we doesn't think that uh, only one simple situation sometimes is a, a silly mistake as well and uh, primary explosion and also after that there can be a secondary explosion and that's explosion worldwide it's not only talking about in our country in malaysia in southeast asia for example but we are looking into the outside which is the international level and also they have a safety codes eh, what we should uh, go on the nfta and so on so i'm just highlight the, this one uh, uh, just very dry to start in to make sure that every one of us are still in the meeting all right in malaysia we are uh, have the uh, law and regulation regarding industrial major accident as we call it sima sima is stand for a control of industrial major accident hazard what we should do regulation will gazette by the malaysian government in 1996 as a minimum safety guidance to ensure safe operation related to uh, mhi mhi stand for major uh, hazard installation processes and sima regulation has been enacted for more than two, uh, two decades eh? and also to the, what is the objective the first one is to prevent a major accident the second one to limit the consequences to people and environment because when we are talking about it we are not talking about the uh, a plan but we are talking about the people and environment also how what a hazard are come from eh? the hazard is something and the potential can cause harm ill health eh, to people to properties eh, and also to the environment and the combination of this we look into the major hazard installation normally a great need for every country in order to provide industrial agriculture and transportation and etc but uh, with energy mhi store large quantity of hazardous substance and energy in one place the definition of mhi is given by sima and also the non major hazard installation they are talking about uh, major hazard installation where those they contain the material in between 10 percent of the threshold quantity and the threshold quantity are categorized as non major hazard installation they have in the schedule and whatever the process of the industry they must be referred to this first before they are running and also all the report must be sent to the department of occupational safety and health before they can run the process they must be sent it to them 3 month before and there has a some part of the uh, reporting whereby information relating to hazardous substance it can be get it from the safety data sheet previously we are using uh, msds material safety data sheet or chemical safety data sheet but when we are talking about the globalized harmonized system uh, jsa we are talking globalized harmonized system ghs i think including uh, indonesia also and now we are uh, sure that uh, the, the packaging the labeling all also have been different to make sure that is a global uh, use and also what are the pictogram also uh, will be uh, effect uh, since uh, they are noticed that the new uh, amendment has been done the second one we are talking about information of the installation the map of the site the scale of a uh, plan of the other uh, site showing the location and quantity how much they are using that the description of the process of the storage involving the hazardous a chemical or what else need to, to be done the maximum number of person likely to present on site we want we, want, we have to know that eh? how many of them are in, involved in this uh, uh, what we call that uh, uh, area and so on information about the nature of the land use of the size that reason why some of the heavy industry some of the industry they are related uh, to the major hazard or as they put uh, not in the same uh, industry small and medium industry they must have located in a specific area means that they need to control as well as to uh, minimize the risk as well and also information the nearest emergency service not only talking about uh, 
the uh, fire rescue, but they are talking about the hospital and what else, you know, they, we are talking all about to make sure that we can cover if they have emergency cases and situation. We have, uh, you know, uh, experience eh, during uh, 20, 20, 20, 25 years back, which is a depot minyak yang terbakar, eh, which is a fire uh, of the uh, depot. All right. Uh, I'm just continue for the part C information relating to management service. What are the management, the staffing arrangement uh, to make, the, to ensure the means provide uh, for the safe operation. And I'm just highlight the C3. C3 stand for the arrangement for training of person working on the site. I'm just highlight this. After that, we, we, uh, we can uh, go further on the training uh, slide. I will show you why it is important. And we are talking about the information relating to a potential major accident. All right. We have learned something from whatever the Bhopal tragedy has been done, the Flixborough. Uh, we are talking about the Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant and so on. We are looking into that. And the, the, the lesson learned from that, we must take a lesson learned from, from them, from the activity that has been done. So we are looking into the what happened and what are the major concerns that we are looking into this. The potential sources, uh, the diagram of the plan in which the industrial activity is carried out. The description of the measure to take it to prevent control of uh, minimize the consequences. Uh, the information about the prevailing uh, meteorological condition. All right, uh, because uh, some cases it happened when uh, during haze. Uh, for example, we are have haze eh, yearly. <laughs> That's a whereby uh, talking about the burning uh, 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 fires. Eh, it come from the uh, various sources. And also, we are talking to estimate the number of people on site and to consequence the surrounding areas. What are the surrounding areas? What we can get from there if anything happened? All right, we move. Uh, we have a related regulation under the under the, other than SIMA regulation. We have another two that are related to chemicals. The first one we are talking about the. Uh, uh, standard of exposure of chemical hazards to health. We call it use regulation. And some persons say that usage regulation doesn't matter about the, only the, about the acronym. In this uh, uh, regulation, they are uh, highlight uh, we, what are the uh, compound, what are the chemical uh, based on the uh, uh, proper manage. And also we are talking about the TWA, total weightage average for the eight hours. And how about the ceiling limit? How about the permissible exposure limit yeah. uh, to ensure that uh, the company that has been used that chemical are aware? The second one, they are talking about the first schedule and second schedule. The first schedule are talking about the PL, uh, ceiling limit and what else, talking about uh, short-term exposure limit and what else. Meanwhile, the second schedule are talking about the hazardous material and uh, who are ever used mixing, storing and uh, this uh, chemical need to be uh, uh, run for the uh, what we call that uh, uh, health surveillance so or the medical surveillance conducted by occupational health doctor all right this is how, what, what we need to highlight the third one we have the uh, 2013 where my malaysian have gazette uh, one of the uh, new regulation they're talking about uh, Occupational Safety and Health Classification Labeling and Safety Data Sheet. We call it Class 2013, whereby all the, some of the pictogram, signal word, and so on has been changed eh, to the new one, eh, whatever based on the global harmonized system. Then, if you're talking about this uh, occupational safety and health exposure, uh, use a standard uh, exposure to chemical hazardous to health regulation 2000 i've been mentioned before so whatever the chemical registered has need to be done if uh, you run you are you are used to some chemicals you need to be registered and after that you must run the chemicals uh what we call it chra chem chemical health risk assessment it needs to be done by the competent person because we want to know the significant risk effect to the uh, to the workers or not, right? We don't want to see that uh, this uh, working area or workstation are free from the uh, risk, but towards the end, our worker have a, you know, a talking about uh, they have a occupational disease such as uh, what we call that 
<clears throat> what we call, uh, uh, for example, a cancer from the carcinogenic uh, uh, chemical and so on. So talking about the industrial hygiene, uh, they must do in a one in a five years or they change the process, they change the machine, they need to redo again. And the record should be kept for 30 years. You mentioned about this, when we are talking about 30 years, it's a long duration whereby we can open back the information and whatever the data before. Okay, uh, excuse me, sir. Right. Next, uh, we are talking about the labels, uh, right? We are talking about the uh, uh, labeling. Uh, what is the sick element we needed in labeling? Uh, we are talking about uh, uh, hazard statement. We are talking about the supplier identification. Okay, Mr. Professor Dr. Abdul Muttalib Lehman, you have five minutes left. Okay. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, since... Okay, Mr. Professor Dr. Abdul Ubu you still yeah, yeah. have five minutes left. Yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> All right, I'm just a few slides only. <laughs> All right, okay. So when we're talking about this, the uh, have, have you seen my, my uh, PowerPoint, is it? Yes? Not yet, sir. We don't okay. see the we slide. Have the, I, yeah, yeah, never mind. We go to the hierarchy process whereby we are talking about hazard identification, risk assessment, and also risk control. Huh? And also after this, uh, we, we have the uh, likelihood time severity. This is a common way whereby we are talking about semi-quantitative uh, measurement. And also we have highlight the hierarchy, which is high medium and low it depends on the numbers and also risk rating and after that uh, we are talking about the example of potential damage hazard and also if you don't do the high hierarchy you can do the job hazard analysis yeah? talking about the the process and how about the analysis it can be done and the preparation uh, the preparation means that you need to send out your people to, to, to gather the knowledge, not only come from the on-the-job training, but also it can be uh, getting from the uh, professional certificate. For example, in Malaysia, we have uh, four universities that has been uh, offered the, this program. We have University of Science Malaysia, Science University of Malaysia. We have University Technology Malaysia. You have University Malaysia Pahang, uh, right? And if you are talking about the plan for the life plan, we and UTHM we have a life plan, and also they have a few institution they have a life plan on how to uh, go as a, a person to prepare, uh, make it a training to ensure that whatever the working platform and so on. So uh, I think. Uh, the, that's all for my presentation. I would like to highlight the future planning. I give a, an example of the future planning, what you want to do in the near future. The reason why for the young blood who are coming this seminar, the webinar today, uh, we need you. We need you in a pipeline. I really need to the young blood to join us. 
in a safety and health, uh, talking about the process safety and the process plan to make sure that you are coming, bring your knowledge, bring your credibility, and also give your, bring your good attitude to ensure that we can. Eh? And I'm sure uh, Southeast Asia, one of the uh, economy development uh, country, and also Indonesia akan jadi tujuh terbesar, eh? lima terbesar di uh, ekonomi di dunia satu hari nanti. So, maknanya kita kena bersedia, anak-anak di, di, di ITPB perlu bersedia supaya uh, 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 ruangan ekonomi itu boleh dijana melalui uh, pengeluaran, hasil pengeluaran di industri juga berkaitan dengan oil and gas and I noticed that you know you have a coal, you have oil and gas, you have Pertamina, it's very you know very famous uh, industry uh, and also it can be services and uh, you can do service, do service on compressor, service on pump, service on valve for example there's a lot of things so that reason why I Uh, we have a long journey to achieve, so I need the form of Rahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Professor Dr. Abdul Muttalib Lehman, for the excellent presentation. The next is, let me to introduce the third speaker for this webinar today, Mr. Dupayan G. Winner Disani, PhD. Mr. Dipayan G. Winner Disani, PhD, he has been academic staff in Universitas Sangga Buana, Bandung since 2019. He has more than 20 years experiences as academician and industry engineer in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Germany. Owing to his industrial background and engagement, he synthesizes the academic programs and industrial need in the planning, delivery, assessing and evaluating the effectiveness of education and training, especially in oil and gas for downstream sector. He is also a reviewer in international research journal in the area of aerospace engineering and active member in promoting green project management. So ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Mr. Diply and Winner Disani PhD with the topic, Plan Manager Incident Commander, time is yours. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Papa Anton. <clears throat> so, uh, I will be with you in maybe uh, 15 minutes ago, yeah, ahead. So, uh, the two speakers before me has uh, a touch issue on the DSM, Process Safety Management. They are very, very important as the auditing tool to make sure that uh, refinery or any oil and gas installation in compliance with the uh, regulating body requirement. And then the second speaker, Prof. Mutalib, has also uh, uh, mentioned on the uh, importance of process safety in uh, installation. So I will touch and complement what they have been uh, uh, explained to us namely who is the person that responsible and accountable uh, accountable to this uh, area then this person we call a plan manager a plan manager is the person that is accountable responsible to make sure that all the psm uh, requirement follow and all the process safety has been done deliver into this area. What happened when, when incident happened in this uh, and then disrupt the normal operation? So I put the title is plan manager and incident commander. Meaning that in the normal operation, the person number one in any refinery we call plan manager. But when incident happened and escalate become disaster, then the person number one to combat all the incident, to overcome all the fire, we call incident commander. So that is the, 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 the area that is very important to everybody 
who become plant manager. Ya. Yeah. So, kalau dalam keadaan normal, dia sebagai manager, kalau terjadi apa-apa dia punya kilang, jangan lari. Ya, yeah. jangan lari. Dia mesti berperan sebagai incident commander. Dia tetap orang nomor 1. That is what I I will bring with you, discuss with you how important the, the the role of plant manager as also the incident commander. If some safety have uh, regulation broken, for example, ya, yeah, then siapa yang bertanggung jawab? Tak boleh lari orang ini. So the next, eh, okay, okay, we can say that, uh, yeah, uh, because. Uh, The audience of this uh, webinar is mostly a student. I can write, yeah, normally because I lecture like you all. Plan manager is the, for the normal operation, yeah, for the normal operation. So, if the operation is not normal because incident happen and incident become major incident, then The person number one is we call incident commander. When incident become major incident, yeah, uh, Mr. Anton, allow me to write on the uh, slide because I do I I do uh, make sure that audience they are interested interested in my presentation, yeah. Uh, I sure. do not want that they are in sleeping mood, yeah. Okay, so uh, that is the the way I, I I try to attract my audience to be focused on what I am uh, teaching or what I am speaking now. Okay, I go on with uh, to the new slide. Yeah, that is that is what happened now. Yeah. So if incident happen in your refinery or in your installation. There are normally three types of incident. Number one is the minor incident can be overcome by people surrounding the incident area. But even though you you try to 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 uh, to combat the incident, the output of any uh, response to incident become incident can stop. Yeah, because you have all the resources, but if you have not enough resources, the incident can escalate. Jadi kalau ada kejadian, begitu semua responder membawa semua peralatan peralatan untuk merespon kebakaran, toxic release, or any kind of incident type. Then two type of outcome will be uh, will, will be uh, delivered. One, okay, we are successful, the incident stop. Or we have not enough resources, not enough manpower, not enough competence of the other people. Yeah, maka incident itu akan menjalar ke mana mana. The minor incident become major. Kalau sudah major incident. Kalau plan manager tidak punya kompetensi, dia akan lari, ya, yeah. atau dia takut. But the good plan manager, dia juga seperti incident commander. So apa itu incident commander? Adalah orang nomor satu yang menangani, yang bertugas bertanggung jawab by law. Agar insiden itu boleh bisa ditangani. Kalau major insiden tidak boleh ditangani, ini akan menjadi become disaster. Ya, disaster akan memberi trigger kepada national issue. Reputasi company akan jatuh. Normal operation pasti disrupted. People akan injured atau meninggal. Aset akan rosak. Nah, the role of plan manager in oil and gas industry adalah tetap sebagai orang nomor satu provider dengan syarat 
orang ini memiliki kompetensi yang sesuai. Ya, yeah. so this title topik ini saya presentasikan hasil kerja empat tahun saya di Pertamina. Saya mengembangkan Pertamina adalah yaitu standard sebagai incident commander apabila terjadi insiden di kilang-kilang Pertamina seluruh Indonesia. Standar yang saya develop adalah international standard. Yeah, that is why I will try uh, uh, to deliver with you, discuss with you. Uh, kenapa insiden commander ini penting bagi terutama anak-anak muda yang ingin menceburi dunia oil and gas. Dalam dunia oil and gas, ya, yeah, Anda sebagai engineer of the nation. Naik pangkat, naik pangkat, naik pangkat. Nomor satu adalah plan manager. If you are the plan manager, you must be competent in how to overcome any incident. Untuk boleh menjadi incident commander. Okay. Nah, ini dia. So, incident commander secara filosofi adalah similar to the wing commander. Ya, yeah, Mr. Anton, you can see here. If the pilot, yeah, has no competence, that is not that is not normal pilot. That is not no pilot uh, that uh, fly Air Asia, Garuda, MES, or any kind of normal uh, aircraft. But for this kind of pilot, that is beyond pilot. Yeah, in the normal situation, that is normal pilot, but. In the in the battle, dalam pertempuran, dia adalah sebagai wing commander. Kalau dia tidak betul 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 buat, ada dua outcome. Dia mati, asetnya jatuh, negaranya kalah. So uh, that is important to show you, ya, yeah, to keep a feeling what I am saying all about. When I talk incident commander, the, per, per, the perception of everybody should be, you are the wing commander, yeah. bring aircraft, make sure you are still alive. Yeah. Otherwise, you see here, surrounding this aircraft, ini semua senjata yang akan membunuh dia. So, it means that the competency of any incident commander who is responsible to overcome any incident within their territorial, the competency of them should be similar to the wing commander competency. That is what I am uh, trying to tell to you. Okay, next. Ini adalah the normal situation during the emergency of every, uh, every plan manager. What happened? Yeah. Actually, our our brain here, our brain here, we can only store maximum seven item within 30 seconds. So, and what happened in the incident uh, situation? If incident situation, okay, what happened? The situation is chaos. The situation is chaos. In incident, a chaos. Many information, yeah, many information coming in to the control room, to the incident command center. But as normal being, sebab pilot, sebab orang ini cuma manusia biasa. Manusia biasa boleh menyimpan informasi maksimum lima item dalam waktu 30 menit. Ini dalam keadaan normal. Ini plan manager. Plan manager karena situasinya aman, normal, dia boleh menyimpan informasi. Makanya di sini tenang. Kalau Anda sebagai plan manager, Anda tenang. Tetapi apabila insiden terjadi, maka situasi akan chaos. Ini penting kita tahu untuk apa? Untuk mengambil yaitu decision. Keputusan yang diambil oleh seorang insiden commander harus adalah tepat, valid, dan sesuai dengan keadaannya. 
ada limitation ya ada limitation to decide apa limitation dia limitation dia kita manusia biasa cuma mampu memiliki yaitu uh, menampung tujuh item dalam maksimum 30 detik lepas itu mungkin keputusan akan berbeda so because of that during the emergency during the emergency as the incident commander they must be able to put what is the priority to ensure that effective action should be taken nah ini adalah satu framework ya ini penting kepada uh, for any engineer ataupun student yang akan pergi kepada dunia oil and gas that is your career path Where is the role of incident commander? That is di sini dia punya role at the top of the of the of the structure. Because the role of the plan manager to manage any emergency. So it means that is good if you work in the oil and gas industry because what? Because the the the, the structure how do where is your career path has been structured, has been decided, has been planned in effective manner. So normally if you if you work yeah as the as the normal uh, uh, operator or any technician or any any uh, engineering team that is your no, normal normal operation uh, activity. But this framework is a structure if any incident happen. Example here for all the plant personnel yeah because of that why you need to take for example a training of competency in K3 yeah why because that is a mandatory for every personnel that is regulated by government by also the company so then you go on here how to respond instruction if incident happen just follow instruction can be fire warden can be a fire marshal then if you are good in your in your in your work then you can go up how to coordinate the response if emergency happen so the right column here that is the standard put by international body so and and, and at the top of the of the emergency responder how to manage emergency then you can become incident commander normally incident normally there are there is also control room operator to communicate with incident commander so that is the the uh, the, the framework if you if you want to know what i shall to uh, what kind of training i need if i want to join in uh, in oil and gas industry yeah uh, in your normal day operation you can you can take uh, example a safety course or any emergency response course so and then if you see here that is the ladder yeah from the bottom until to the top layer if you are very good in managing the people in managing any uh, any distress situation then that is your opportunity to become incident commander yeah Uh, that is not not many people yeah actually uh, that can be uh, as incident commander but there are many people working as plan manager what happen if the plan manager what happen if the plan manager is not competent to overcome the the incident so they have to delegate they have to de uh, he or she must be must delegate to the uh, to the relevant uh, personnel that are competent in the uh, incident command uh, uh, system Okay, I go on uh, with the next slide. Yeah, yeah. So Indonesian, yeah, especially uh, Pertamina or any uh, or an, an foreign company operating in Indonesia, uh, we follow what we call ICS ICS structure. Yeah, that is the ICS incident command system. Yeah. Uh, that is incident command system that has been followed by BNPT BNPT follow also kalau ada gempa bumi di Indonesia 
juga mereka pun follow uh, ICS punya structure. So before ICS ada namanya Trust Court ya. Trust Court is a Australian standard but uh, Pertamina now follow also ICS structure. It mean that kalau Anda belajar misalnya uh, yaitu bagaimana sistem apabila situasinya uh, terjadi keadaan insiden gempa bumi misalnya, kemudian kebakaran misalnya, maka ada satu standard. There is a standard we call ICS. ICS inilah yang akan dipakai oleh mana-mana oil, oil and gas industry untuk yaitu uh, menangani suatu kecelakaan yang ada di uh, perusahaan itu. So, kalau kita lihat yang follow comply 100% adalah ya Pertamina, ini adalah comply to ICS standard. Saya rasa di ITB, IEA, uh, you can offer also the training ICS Uh, to uh, to all your student yeah to, to make sure that your student is familiar yeah with this uh, with with the, uh, with, uh, with this instruction okay the next one uh, ini adalah the strategy yeah. the strategy uh, how uh, uh, how we we work if incident happen as the incident commander yeah normally Uh, number one is keeping appropriate agency. Yeah, ini adalah can be a government. Yeah, government. Yeah, we have to inform them that incident happened to our premise and uh, PNPT. Yeah, PNPT. If yeah to ensure that they are ready if something happen uh, in our incident at the, to become escalate and become after disaster. Ada damka. So that is that what I mean. Uh, we have to keep uh, where is our relevant uh, agency that we have to inform in case that we need support from them. So that is the very important uh, communication information. Yeah, uh, normally we uh, we use radio communication, and we need to con uh, to monitor. And a control that we have enough resources. Yeah, resources can be medical resources. Yeah, medical can be resources, and also uh, responder on site and also off site. And as the incident commander, we need to evaluate. Yeah, uh, the progress, how effective we can overcome the incident. And what happened? Yeah, if a change in plan have yeah, why we need change in plan? Because maybe during the fire there are also toxic release, so we need to change in accordance to the environment, to accordance to the situation. So and do not forget to delegate authority if you are not able to manage uh, the incident. So. Because the incident normally happen not uh, not only one one hour can last also one day two day or three week yeah so dealing with stress is very very important number one safety for ourselves yeah and then we can save the others so or because of that dealing with stress during incident is very very critical as the incident commander. Okay, sorry. Uh, I just uh, I I think I have my next slide. Yeah, that is the facility that we provide. Yeah, uh, to 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 build. Yeah, to 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 to, to produce uh, plan manager as incident commander. That is the facility uh, that Pertamina has in uh, Sumatra. So it means that we train. The, the management the managing team of Pertamina to become incident commander. So we do here uh, we do here scenario yeah real time. You see here the communication on site on the screen with the people in the in the in the in the control room with the incident management team. That is the incident commander who decide 
Yeah, and, and picture below that is the situation during the briefing. It means we evaluate what we have uh, achieved uh, if incident happen. Mr. Anton, I think I end up my uh, presentation with saying to you, to you all, thank you very much and looking forward for nice discussion. Thank you so much, Mr. Diply and Jiminer Sunny PhD for the interesting presentation. And I would say thank you for all our presenters today. And the next agenda is roundtable discussion. So if you have a question related to the presenters, you can ask submit through the chat. And here I already uh, obtained some question. <clears throat> First question comes from Mr. Suhar Wanto uh, for Mr. Mas Julie. Uh, the questions are two. First is, uh, how about safety requirements to prevent the refinery to protect the fire? That is our first uh, question. And the second question follow is, how to uh, screen constructor to follow owner procedure that uh, comply to the safety requirements. Those are the questions from Mr. Suhar, Suharwanto. Okay, please, Mr. Masjuli. Very much, uh, moderator. I will uh, answer to the question from the Mr. Suharwanto from Onwir about the requirement to prevent refinery to protect the fire, how to screen the contractor to follow owner procedure that the safety requirement uh, the requirement. Okay, uh, Mr. Suarwanto, uh, to protect the company from the fire, the, uh, in a uh, refinery already uh, study study from the refinery and building because uh, the first time in study about uh, uh, study atau studi kelayakan and then uh, engineering design and then the construction in construction we uh, give the study about the hazard and then the operation, operation will uh, study the hazard and then the uh, process safety management. Uh, already prepare in the design and then the application. And then like uh, each unit, there is a fire protection system and then uh, it's uh, from the community. There is a uh, give the fire to the refinery, and then uh, already uh, ready to how to the uh, uh, how the to uh, how to the equip uh, atau memadamkan uh, that uh, fire. That is uh, Mr. Swarwanto. Uh, uh, each company already uh, ready to uh, fire estimation. If uh, not enough uh, from the internal, and then uh, the company will uh, make the uh, I love to add the company up and like uh, balongan. Apabila tidak mampu, akan dibantu oleh unit-unit lainnya. Itu apabila uh, tidak uh, segera dipadamkan, apakah sehari atau dua hari, maka butuh bantuan. Karena ini yang saya lakukan waktu saya di Jakarta, saya uh, kerahkan semua uh, karyawan dari seluruh Pertamina untuk membantu uh, Cilacap termasuk uh, materialnya itu mungkin Pak Suarwanto jadi kita sudah siap dari sejak sudah dikelayakan 
kemudian desain, kemudian konstruksi, kemudian uh, startup, kemudian uh, operation. Dan ini selalu dicek uh, oleh uh, asuransi untuk melihat layak tidaknya uh, industri ini siap untuk ke aspek penanggulangan kebakarannya. Itu Pak uh, Suarwanto. Terima kasih banyak Pak. Terus yang kedua ya. Yang kedua Pak Iwan, moderator. Ya, yeah, the second question is still from Mr. Suharwanto, sir. The question is how to screen contractor to oh, follow yeah. out procedure. Yeah. Uh, to screen the contractor to follow owner procedure. There is a guidance. Uh, the name of the guidance uh, contractor safety management system. Uh, Pertamina will uh, check the contractor ready or not uh, to follow uh, about the, this uh, procedure from the Pertamina. The team from Pertamina will check the office of the contractor uh, to check the prepare about the manpower and then uh, procedure and then the facility. How to if there is fire or if there is accident uh, in the Pertamina uh, akibat dari uh, kontraktor about that uh, Mr. Uh, Suarwanto. Oke, okay, uh, thank you so much Mr. Mas Juli. And the next question is from Mr. Amirul. Uh, for Mr. Winardi, the topic is incident commander, and the question is, who appointed as OSC and what competence for this position, sir? Please, Mr. Winardi. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the nice uh, question. Yeah, uh, on skin commander uh, normally has the, uh, is appointed uh, uh, by by incident commander. Yeah, because there are uh, there are so many commander. Uh, what I uh, on skin commander is the the person that uh, uh, on the operational side. It means they are facing the fire if the incident is fire. So uh, this on skin commander must report to the incident commander. The incident commander itself, uh, they are they they stay far far away from the from the from the incident area. So we have to differentiate uh, different location. On skin commander is the person that operate on skin, and the incident commander he keep instruction to the on skin commander, and he manage if the on skin commander need help, need other resources. Example, yeah, tadi kata Pak Mas Juli. Dia boleh memobilisasi semua aset-aset uh, untuk overcome itu insiden. Misalnya, ya uh, itu yang pertama. Siapa yang appoint adalah biasanya yang mengappoint adalah plan manager. Karena dia memiliki experience, dia memiliki kompetensi, dan dia memahami yaitu area di tempat itu. Apa yang dimaksud dengan dia memahami area? Dia tahu proses. Dia tahu PNID. Dia tahu yaitu PFD. Dia tahu all the resources. Biasanya di Pertamina ini adalah tempat yaitu damkar. Biasanya ya, pemadam kebakaran. So I think I answer the first question. Uh, can you uh, can you repeat the second question Pak Anton? Uh, I'm afraid there are no second question, sir. The question is only that. I see. Okay, I think I, I, I can answer the question, correct? Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, so I hope my, my answer is uh, sufficient to the audience. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Winardi. 
now uh, move to the other question uh, is from Mr. Hasbi. Uh, he would like to ask to 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 presenter. First is the question for Mr. Mas Julie. The first question is, what is the radius of the surface point or ideal distance between an oil and gas refinery and a residential area? Consider there are many explosion incidents in refinery which have an impact on human losses and the surrounding by environment. Okay. And the second question is for Mr. Masjuli also, from Mr. Hasbi. Is the system of entry to work and work holidays, duty of duty, part of the safety process? Is it effective? Where I work, we use, we use a working system of 20 working days and 10 days off. And uh, Mr. Hasbi also uh, asked to Mr. Winardi, if the fire is crude oil tank, what type of the extinguishing media is the most suitable, sir? Is the extinguishing medium harmless to health? Is the incident commander also in charge or of investigating incident, sir? And then for Mr. Abdul Mutalib, how do you find out the level of hazard risk, if it is measured using the Hiradisi method, then what is the difference between job safety analysis and risk hazard identification? Okay, please, uh, Mr. Winardi, Mr. Masjuli, or Mr. Abdul Mutalib, uh, time is yours. Mr. Masjuli first, perhaps. Thank you, uh, yes. moderator. Uh, again, Mr. Hasbi, good uh, question. This is now I'm still looking for about uh, uh, standard about the radius from the uh, industry and then uh, other industry. Still uh, looking for I, because I'm uh, still uh, I will uh, uh, building the LNG terminal and then there is a uh, neighbors will uh, build again about the asphalt plant. Itu mungkin Pak uh, Hasbi, jadi untuk radius uh, di dalam kilang itu siap karena sudah ada standarnya baik dari asuransi maupun dari uh, standar standar uh, lainnya. Tetapi untuk community atau untuk neighbors, nah ini uh, saya belum mendapatkan, saya belum mendapatkan. Untuk karena di dalam kilang sudah ada pagar kilang itu sudah lengkap standar-standarnya uh, seperti zon 1, zon 2, zon 3. Tapi untuk di luar dari industri, community atau tetangga, nah ini yang saya alami baru perhitungan, perhitungan secara software. Jadi kita akan masukkan data-data tersebut nanti kalau meledak itu sejauh mana ke community itu uh, saya pernah alami uh, menggunakan software tersebut sekitar 30 meter 30 meter uh, dampak daripada ledakan tetapi untuk standar kayak risk insurance itu uh, yang sudah ada yang saya alami itu antar antar fasilitas misalnya jarak antar tangki itu sudah sudah ada gitu atau jarak antar tangki dengan unit operasi itu sudah ada standarnya tapi untuk community atau untuk antar uh, industri misalnya tadi kayak saya mau bangun terminal LNG itu sudah jelas uh, pagar pagarnya tapi ada orang lain yang membangun pabrik aspal di sebelah malah bersinggungan ini yang uh, mungkin kawan-kawan bisa bantu nanti uh, bagaimana gitu menjelaskan ke owner gitu itu mungkin uh, Pak uh, Hasbi ya bagus Pak Hasbi kemudian uh, is the system of entry to work and work holidays on duty uh, of duty part of the safety process is it effective Where I work 
we use walking system uh, 20 working days and uh, 10 days off. Saya alami Pak uh, Paspi ya. Saya pernah di total itu dua minggu uh, on duty and then dua minggu uh, holiday. Kalau di offshore problem kita akan bantu ya. Akan bantu kejadian di uh, perusahaan kita. Tapi kalau di darat kayak di kilang kita cuti misalnya. Kayak saya misalnya di Balongan. Kemudian pas saya ke Jakarta terjadi darurat di Balongan. Saya kembali gitu Pak. Bantu kilang Balongan. Jadi bisa bisa apa bisa dikejar kita untuk membantunya gitu. Tapi kalau di tengah laut itu uh, karena butuh butuh transportasi segala macam ya. Jadi uh, saya belum mengalami gitu Pak. Yang saya alami di darat kita bisa bantu dan saya alami sendiri waktu saya ke Jakarta itu bilang Balongan ada problem. Nah itu butuh waktu 18 hari untuk memadamkan uh, kebakaran. Nah, itu saya kembali gitu Pak. Saya ikut bantu. Kebenaran saya sebagai manajer K3. Itu mungkin Pak uh, ini uh, Pak Hasbi. Semoga bermanfaat Pak pengalaman saya. Oke, okay, thank you, Mr. Mas Juli. Uh, the next, maybe Mr. Winardi Sani. Oke, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Oke. Okay. Uh, Who investigate? Ya, yeah. incident commander do does not investigate. Ya, yeah. because investigation is after incident. Ya, yeah. bahkan incident commander akan diinvestigasi. Ya, yeah. so investigation done by investigating team. Uh, because of that, if you are incident commander and you have the right competency. You follow the incident command system standard. That will protect you, yeah, from the if investigation uh, carry out. If you are not capable, you have not the capability to respond to incident. Then after incident, investigating team will be coming in. Siapa uh, investigasi bisa polisi. Tapi kalau Anda mempunyai kompetensi, you follow all the incident command standard, then Anda dilindungi. Karena Anda telah menjalankan kerja dengan baik. Oke. Okay. The first question. Apa media yang sesuai kalau ada uh, apa crude oil? Biasanya foam, normally lah. Tapi, what kind of foam? They are different in concentration. Yeah, they are different in concentration. So the most important uh, parameter which foam I shall use adalah ingat the flame temperature, suhu api itu tinggi sekali. Media yang Anda gunakan mesti memiliki boiling point jauh di atas boiling point crude oil yang terbakar. You cannot use water. Because by the boiling point of water only 100 degrees Celsius. Anda boleh menggunakan powder. Ya, yeah, powder material itu karena powder itu pun dipakai. Tetapi ini bukan tugas incident commander. Ini tugas orang-orang yang spesifik menangani on skin-nya. Bahwa they have the right resources to respond the fire. Incident commander, tugas dia mengecek bahwa we have the right resources to respond any incident type. I think I can uh, I answer the question, Pak Anton. Thank you. All right, so, okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Winardi. Okay, uh, now it's time for Mr. Abdul Muthalib. Uh, the question. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank Time you, is yours, Anton. sir. So, uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, when they are talking about what are different thing about the uh, HIREC and also JSA, if you are talking about the HIREC hazard identification, risk assessment, and risk control, 
normally we use a semi quantitative method whereby there is the sentence and also they have a numbers from the likelihood uh, likelihood uh, we are talking about number one two three four five they have their own meaning and also after that we are talking about the severity the keterukan kalau berlaku kemalangan uh, berlaku kejadian kemalangan itu keadaan keterukannya dibahagikan kepada satu dua tiga empat dan lima satu itu ialah negligible eh? yang kedua itu ialah uh, minor injury yang ketiga itu ialah uh, major injury which is talking about the permanent disability manakala nombor empat itu ialah fatal ya eh? manakala nombor lima itu ialah catastrophic yang mana ia mengakibatkan bencana lebih daripada satu uh, kehilangan nyawa ya tewas dan juga uh, memberi kesan langsung kepada uh, properties and also uh, environment ya eh? didarabkan dua itu dia akan dapat risk rating eh, likelihood time severity kebarang kalian darab dengan keterukan kita akan dapat hasil darab itu dipanggil risk rating dengan adanya risk rating ini baru kita lihat di table yang mana kalau kadarnya 1 hingga 4 ialah low manakala 5 hingga 12 ialah medium dan yang 15 hingga 25 maksimumnya 25 ialah high yang high ini kita nak ambil uh, kita kena ambil action yang segera. Maknanya bila dapat itu warnanya warna merah, maknanya we need uh, immediate action. Which is uh, number yang warna yellow, yang keduanya warnanya yellow, which is we need a certain time. You can give a certain time to look into this hazard and risk. And the, the last one is uh, the the green the green color, which is this one is very low. But at the same time, we have to observe eh, from time to time. And how about if we are talking about the JSA? JSA is one of the tactic to hazard identification. Also, JSA means a systematic examination, a doc and documentation of every task within his job to identify safety and hazard and the step to control this eh, to control this and uh, basic three step of the JSA the first one is identify the 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 uh, hazard N number two is the pre uh, determine the preventive measure what we can preventive that the, we do the prevention the third one we uh, overcome the hazard so when we have this one from the documentation we can check one by one at the same time we are noticed that uh, this is uh, what we call uh, we can uh, look into the uh, process whereby uh, hot work cold work using a machinery using the uh, chemicals mixing and so on we are noticed that from the task that is my answer to the uh, participant thank you very much Thank you very much, Mr. Abdul Mutalib, for the interesting answers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now uh, we move to the last question for this roundtable discussion. Uh, the question is from Mr. Nus Jirwan for Mr. Winardi. If any accident in operation happened, do we must to invite the local police if the accident happened in the field, sir? What do you think? No need. Yeah, because uh, the duty of police is different. Yeah, because if the incident happened in your territorial, the incident happened in your kilang. Yeah, apakah kalau kita ada kita lakukan dalam rumah kita panggil polisi? Tidak semestinya. Tidak semestinya. Tapi kalau itu sabotase, yes. Kapan kita panggil polisi kalau ada orang tidak diundang datang ke rumah kita? Ya. Itu pun insiden. There are so many type of incident. Oleh karena itu, skenario harus dibuat. Skenario. Skenario pertama, example fire. If we, are to, uh, if we are talk uh, we are talking about incident yeah they are not only fire toxic release earthquake pandemic sabotage sabotase kalau sabotase ya yeah, anda mesti beritahu polisi 
karena ini ada orang luar tidak diundang datang ke kilang kita. So, ya, yeah. it depend on the scenario. It depend on the case. What kind of incident you have? Kalau insiden itu fire and you can overcome the fire, surprise the fire, finish. Kalau ada laporan, nanti polis akan polisi akan menginvestigasi. You have all the document and you are protected. Tapi jangan sampai begitu insiden awal-awal panggil polisi untuk apa? Pencuri itu. So I think my uh, my answer sub, uh, satisfies ya yeah? uh, bisa menjawab dengan mudah. Bayangkan kalau insiden terjadi di rumah begitu saja. Thank you Pak Anton. Alright, uh, thank you so much Mr. Winardi. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was the last question. It means that we end the roundtable discussion. We know that this is very interesting topic, and if you still have a question, ladies and gentlemen, you can. Ask to the presenters of the record. All right. I like to close this section by thanking all speakers and all the candidates for their participation. Fire, explosion, chemical accident in chemical process facility or other facilities dealing with hazardous materials such as refineries and oil and gas production in installation. And then uh, incident happened or occurred anytime and anywhere. If this cannot be managed or cannot be overcome, that will be a disaster. Um, if this happened, a person in charge is the incident commander. Those are really interesting topics. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now back to the MC, Ms. Yuli Mulyani. Okay, thank you to amazing moderator today. Uh, before we close this event, I like to thank you so much to the speaker for informative and interesting presentation and participant uh, very active participation. Hopefully the international webinar will be beneficial for everybody. I mean, everybody, I mean. I'm Yuli Mulyani, SDMC, uh, who like to apologize. We have some, uh, some mistakes uh, during this event. Thank you for enjoying this event. Certainly appreciate your attention. And let's close this event by saying Hamdalah. Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. And thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you for the speaker. Yes, thank you.